seriously? No. I'm looking at my eyelids from the inside. I've just been thinking. You know, trying to figure out what our Sandra was like at school. You know, what sort of a teenager she grew into. Bet she knocked them dead in exams, you know. I mean, she must have had something going for her, mustn't she, to cop for that fella of hers? Doesn't look like the type that had settled for a bimbo, not with his money. I don't think that necessarily figures, Alec. Wish I could have been there at the wedding. Wish I could have given her away. You don't have to get up yet. I'm bone dry. Oh, no, come on. Bring a tray up. You've left her, and yes, you have some responsibility towards the maintenance of your family, but you can't buy your way out of the guilt, Ken. That's just part of the process. It's bound to lessen with time. I wish I could believe that. And if money does pose a problem, I've always got savings we could use. I don't think that's appropriate. I've landed you with enough burdens without funding my wife's alimony. I don't see it like that. No. Anyway, the record is picking up. We'll soon realise enough profits to put money worries on one side. I'm grateful, you know. Will you help with the paper? Well, since you're into guilt, I could say you owe me one. But believe me, I'm happy doing it. That's your life. I like being part of that. Talking of which, that's where we should be now. Oh, God, I've got to sort some clothes out. What, from Coronation Street? Yeah. Can't think of anything I'd like less than going back to my thing. No. But for as long as they're still there, dear, you won't know for sure that it's permanent. Look, love, I know it feels... Strange. I know it's awkward, but... Well, the best thing to do when you feel like that is to get on with your life and do what you've always done. We've all got to. I don't want to go. You've got lots of friends at school. You need to get out of this house and be with other people. You need that. But what if they know me dad's gone? Well, why should they? People around here know. People who go to our school. When Debbie Freeman's mum and dad split up, Everyone knew about it straight away. I don't know what to say to them. Then say nothing. If you feel like that, just tell them to mind their own business. What if they ask if he's coming back? I'm sorry, love. I can't answer that. <coughs> oh, Dorothy. Oh, come on. Oh, Tracy. <coughs> She's done well. She's done very well. I mean, if you could say at 32 that you'd married one of Cheshire's leading solicitors and a house in Hanford, what would you say? Fix that B, dear. <laughs> well, I dare say they've got one of them and all. I, I never checked. Hey, seriously, boss, though. I mean, uh, is she over the moon or what? I mean, clocking your old fella for the first time in... 20 years, Jack. Could go either way, couldn't it? Yeah, know? go on. What did she say when she first clapped eyes on you? Yeah, she said, hello. What do you think she said? There aren't words for, for situations like that, Tina. I was just feelings. You know, when I felt like I was overwhelmed. She was chuffed, though, you know. Well, of course she was chuffed. You know, we've been invited for drinks, me and Bet. You know, Sandra's birthday party. It'll be a right posh do. Not like that trough you're used to, Jack. Oh. Do you know, I can't make it out. What, love? Well, why anybody this day and age would leave keys in a car on a tenter? Oh, well, they do, don't they? I mean, you've only to look in the paper, you'll see at least one a week. I mean, it's saying those burglars walking straight to somebody's house because they've left the door unlocked. With a ten a penny, despite all the warnings. But it's not 
taxi driver. Oh, come on. I mean, it's now sharper than taxi drivers. And Don's not exactly behind the door, so... Ah, well, that's something the police left to sort out, isn't it? He was very rude to me. Who, person? Don Brennan. I said just the same, he gave me a right mouthful. I said, that's no way to get people on your side. He's skating on very thin ice, that chap. <laughs> An orange juice? Nay, now there's not very many quirks. I mean, wheels impounded, but uh, surely a decent pint is in order, Don. Uh, we'll have two orange juices and two hot pots, Jack. Thank you very much. I'm borrowing Martin's motor. I'm going down the neck, see if I can get some sense. Yes, and sober would be fitting. Hey, now, think on if you need the truce. Anything uh, character references out like that? Hold on a minute, Jack. Don doesn't need no character references. He's done nothing wrong. What's oh, all this I hear about Alex's daughter? Oh, yes. Oh, well, it must be very exciting, I must admit. I mean, 20 years, it's a long time. They must have a lot to catch up on. No doubt. Hand forth, I hear. Very genteel, very nouveau riche. It's not somewhere I'd like to be myself. No, me neither, Derek. 120, please. There we are. Tom, can we join you? Oh, I love you. Oh, Tina, be an angel. Fetch us our drinks over with you. Gin and tonic. Right. Yes. Have um, a gin and tonic. All right, back in a second. Oh, you all right, Tom? Of course he's all right. At least he would be if everybody had stopped treating him like a number one suspect. He's over Ivan. Nobody believed Don with that hit and run. Don't they? You should see some of the faces I get round here. Indeed, he's just behaving as if nothing had happened. She came into the shop this morning. Now, I didn't see her, but Rita says she thinks she was very on guard. Well, I'm still rather stunned that Ken and Deirdre ever separated, but uh, I wouldn't really like to pass judgment on either of them. <laughs> I would. I was very disappointed in Ken. I mean, he's always struck me as someone who could work through that sort of thing. There's something I've noticed about you lately, maybe. You've got a very blinkered view of life, of people. I beg your pardon? It's romantic and over-sentimental. I mean, if they find a long-lost daughter, you're delighted for them. If they face an unfortunate divorce, you're distressed for them. Oh, surely there's nothing wrong with that. Well, not per se, but something in between, surely. Like Mavis lacks credibility. Regular everyday life doesn't touch her. It has to be something extreme to elicit any real response, like traumas, disasters. That is not true. And I'll tell you something I've noticed about you lately, Derek Wilton. You're bad-tempered, ill-mannered and downright rude, like just now with Bet. Ever since you got the sack, you, you've made it out that it's my fault. Well, don't blame me for finding yourself unemployed. No, it's not my fault either, Maven. Do I get sympathy? No. Oh, yes, you do. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to put up with this behaviour. So, you can either pull yourself together or suffer the consequences. You see, she's impossible half the time. Of course, I blame the Barlows flaunting their differences. It rubs off. Who are you ringing? Well, oh, I'm just trying to get a price, uh, you know, for a taxi to our Sandra's. I can't drive to a drinks do, can I? And Don Brennan, the hit and run man's no good anymore. I want to talk. This isn't easy for me. Because I know how much it means to you. And I know what you're getting out of it. But I'm not going with you to Hanford. What do you mean? I can't go through with it. I wish it had never started. I, th I thought... I thought you were keen. I thought you were happy about it. I am. For you. Because I think you've found what you want. And it's waiting for you in Hanford. <sighs> oh, no, Ben. You, you don't understand. All I want is to, is to make up for things that Sandra's missed. I need to make it up to her. How? I don't know, seeing her, talking to her. I mean, she must have a bigger hole to fill than me because she was only a kid when Joyce and me parted. I mean, there must be things she wants to know. I'm sorry, Alec, but I can't. You see, I'm not a part of all that and I don't want to be. No disrespect. If I wasn't getting in the way, I'd just be tagging along. I don't want to just tag along. You go, by all means. But make excuses for me.
Paul. Sorry, Tom. That was my fault. I was miles away. That's not the agenda for the next meeting you're thinking about, is it? You look lousy. <laughs> Thanks a million. You know, for a solicitor, you look good with broken teeth. Things no better. Oh, it's our Tracy. A 12-year-old trying to make sense of all this separation mess and expecting me to give her all the answers. You're lucky. Most couples get divorced because they can't ask the right questions. Anyway, thank you for your unofficial advice. I did talk to Ken about money, but I still don't know where I stand. Well, look, you should know how you stand. Every day I talk to people who've left it too late to find out. Are you offering to take me on your books? Come and see me about five-ish. Not here, at the practice. Red Lion Street? Yeah, fine. I really don't know how you can do that. Uh, I'll be burned under rest. Anyway, this is good stuff. I can't wait to read on, even if I did write it. Captivating. <laughs> Recorder circulation now up to 25. Yeah! Come in. The rumours must be true. No editor laughs like that unless the ship's about to go under. <laughs> well, Mr. Free Sheet himself. Hello, Ted. Do you know Wendy Crozier? <laughs> yeah, all part of the rumours. <laughs> Only joking, love. Does he treat you all right? Or is he the mithering type of boss? Like most people who know me, Ken just lets me get on with what I'm doing and uh, remembers my poor sense of humour. <laughs> yeah, how's it going, Ken? Oh, the rumours aren't true, otherwise we wouldn't have our rival publisher on our doorstep. Oh. So, what is it this time? A trade-off? I keep the bedding centre advert by the hustle your patio world? No, it's not, actually. No, I know it's not, because I got both contracts, didn't I? Well, luck of the draw, isn't oh, it? not on your life. That was damned hard footwork for me and Wendy. Oh. Credit where it's due, and you're right. That's partly why I'm here. What I really want to know is, are you willing to sell this shrine to Enterprise, lock, stock and barrel? The Gazette wants to buy you out. This would be a sensible offer, Ken. It, it's just one day out of your life to look the part. Oh, come on, Beth, play the game for my sake. I mean, is it so much to ask? Oh, come on, Alec. There's more to it than that, and you know it. All right, it might just be drinks this time, but what after that? Will you fetch them round here, and we'll end up going to classicals at Free Trade Hall? Oh, where's the crime in that? Alec, I'm trying to talk to you in English. You seem to be hearing me in double Dutch. I don't want to go. I won't fit in. Not because I can't look the part, but because that's your other life. And it scares me sick that you'll want too much of it, more than you do of me. I always knew you were slow on the uptake. I didn't think you were completely stupid. I mean, what do you think I am, eh? I mean, why do you think I want you there, Bet? I mean, really? Well, I told you... I want you... you there because I love you. I want you there because you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Not just for show. Not just to make up a pair. I want our Sandra to be proud that I've caught for someone like you. Alec, I'm so sorry. I was frightened I might lose you. That you might change. No, you do see my point, don't you? People can change when they start digging up the past. That depends what motives they have, doesn't it, for going back. And if what they find is better than what they've got now, then yes, I agree, it's dodgy. Nothing could be better than what I've got, Bet. You, this pub, and a golden chance to make up a few things to a daughter I ditched yonks ago. It felt perfect to me. Alec, that's all I needed, just to hear you say that. We'll go to Anforth, and I'll be proud to look the part now. Now I know I'm not digging my own grave. There's just one little obstacle. As in frock. I'm clean out of cocktail numbers. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Get yourself something nice. I want you to look the best. And what's more, you're treating me like a flaming criminal. I've done nothing wrong. 
Can we get on with this, please, Mr. Brennan? I just want to check through your statement and see we've left nothing out. Again? Would you like to go and get yourself a cup of coffee or something, Mrs. Brennan? We shouldn't be long. Uh, no, I wouldn't. And personally, I agree with Don. Look, I know you're just doing a job, but there's no wonder you get a reputation treating folk like this. But with respect, we have to assume that you had plenty of time after the accident to abandon the vehicle and then claim the car was stolen. Look, does he look like that sort of a man? They come in all shapes and sizes, Mrs. Brennan. You claim you were in the betting shop at 4.15. The accident took place at 4.17. You didn't report the motor nicked until 4.35. Like, our point of view, Mr. Brendan, it's all a bit neat, isn't it? Excuse me. What betting shop? Well, you told me you'd gone into a public gents. It makes sense, Ken. You know it does. You'd be well catered for. Capital to restart, providing it's not another free sheet, and staff won't be left to fend for themselves. Well, I must say, Ted, as persuasive arguments go, you're a craftsman. But no, no deal. The recorder's on the up, and you know it, otherwise you wouldn't be wasting your breath. You've had a marginal increase. You've got the council contract at your expense. Now that's stung. The Gazette's been good to Weatherfield Council. Shows our stamina. A marginal increase, but don't kid yourself, Ken. It's only a matter of time. You only need another summer like the last one and you're all dried out. Well, I'm, uh, we are prepared to take that risk. It's a mistake, Ken. Ken, you were great. Uh, I thought you were softening then. Cat and mouse, Ted expects it. But he's so wrong. We will make it work. We've proved it so far. Record a circulation up to 26. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, Don. Why did you lie to me? I just spent the truth a bit. It was because you didn't want me to know you'd left your cap outside a betting shop. That was why. That was bad enough. But I could have made the right fools out of the pair of us down at that police station. If they'd have known that you'd have liked to be, to have blown your whole story sky high. Well, they didn't, did they? No, because I kept my mouth shut till it was safe, that's why. All right, all right. I'm sorry. It's not the first time that your gambling's got you in bother as well. And it's not the first time I finished up bailing you out either. A fiver each way on a knack. It just so happens that the car gets nicked while I'm placing the bet, but that does not make me a flaming criminal. It still makes you a liar. And what you need most of all now, Don Brennan, is to be trusted. Well, don't struggle on my part, Ivy. Because nobody else seems to be. Can I come in? That was to you. Oh? Well, you've not been in touch with either of us. I thought a letter might be less embarrassing. What do you want, Ken? Is she in? No, she's out with Emily. I don't know how long they'll be. I need to collect some things. Fine. Most of it's in bags. How is Tracy? How do you think? Look, I realise that she needs some answers now. I know I've not been too clever in explaining things, my side of things. Oh, save it, Ken. I don't need to hear all that. Work on telling a 12-year-old why you've not even phoned. Are you going to tell me what it says? Oh, I'm too damn right I am. I went to see my solicitor again today, mostly about money. I've told you, Deirdre, I'll do what's right. You don't have to fight for I it. I only want what we're entitled to, me and Tracy. But I've been advised to claim it in a lump sum rather than maintenance. We remortgaged the house to buy the recorder from the receivers. I own half the house, so I own half the paper. I'll settle for the house. But in order to buy your half out, I'd have to sell the paper. Not my dilemma, is it, Ken?
sad about that sad lesson too. Oh, it's in a mess according to papers, but none of my doing, Phyllis. Fella would say that, wouldn't he? What do you mean by that, Phyllis? Well, it was your tax that knocked him off his bicycle and then drove hey, away. Hey, hey, button it, will you, Phyllis? I'm only saying what it looks like. I know. And it's only what folk are thinking round here. Like who? Um, oh, yeah. God. Say it to me face, you interfering old busybody. We're only going off the evidence, that's all. There is no, no evidence. evidence. I would say, it's not worth it. Come on, enough on your plate. Come on, man. Ooh, he's an animal, that man. I need a brandy. Come on, man. What about you, Perth? You are going to get me young one of these days, you are. But don't you see, the only way I can earn money at the moment is by making the recorder better and stronger. What's so bad about maintenance? It's precisely because the recorder's not a stable source. I don't want to be waiting round to see what your advertising revenue's like every week to see if me and Tracy have got enough to live on. Our lives have been messed about enough. And that's the price I've got to pay? I just want the house. Knowing precisely how much I have to sacrifice to provide it. Tracy! Oh, love! Oh, I've missed you. I really have missed you. Oh, Are you love. stopping, Dad? No, he's not, love. I can't believe oh, you. Oh, I hate you. I hate you. Please. I hate you. Please. You hate me as well. No, that's not yes, true, Tracy. Do. I love you. You don't live here anymore. Tracy, you want please to come listen live with to us, me. So why don't you just get lost and leave no. us alone? Tracy! And Coronation Street returns at the same time tomorrow. Next up today, Kim goes missing in Emmerdale.